All right, another grilling with the good dogs. The good dogs are over there on the couch. Probably upset because I got to do some work on the front door over there in the door frame. I got all that stuff set up. What are we going to do today? So, a while back, you know, we did that boar's leg, and it turned out good. I've had better. Okay, that was a wild boar. This is a wild sow. Um, but I'm worried that it too will not have enough fat content to really get that nice pulled pork uh, texture that you're used to. So what I want to try today, and this is totally an experiment, it may not go well, is I got some bacon grease. Now I'm going to work this thing up like you do a normal pulled pork leg, but instead of putting it in a tray, I'm going to wrap it in foil. So let me get it all taken out. Let me get it all dried up because you can see all that blood from the freezer. We're going to get it done. You'll see. So how is this going to be different? I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to use mustard. Now, you, like I've explained last time, you put mustard on first because that aids in the adhesion of any kind of rubs you're going to put on there. I don't think we need to use that this time because what we're going to do is we're going to slather this thing down in bacon grease. Okay, bacon grease is, of course, rendered from pigs. So it should work out just fine. When we do that, we're also going to apply some Stubbs pork rub, the stuff is fantastic, and then Stubbs barbecue sauce, okay? And then we're going to encase it in foil. It's gonna be completely encased. So nothing should be able to escape or, or, or um, migrate too much from where I've applied it. So I don't think we're gonna need the mustard. So that's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna let this sit for a little while. I gotta go get the smoker ready because I actually ran it dry the other day. So. We're gonna work on that, let this sit, it's patted down dry, and come back at you. A little short one for you here. Uh, this is gonna be the first time I'm using mesquite. Normally, I don't like mesquite. I did some turkey hunting out in West Texas. They use mesquite on everything, it smelled good. So I'm gonna start trying to use some mesquite, and when I smoke the turkeys that I got, I'm definitely gonna try and use some mesquite just to try and get a little bit of nostalgia in there. So we'll see what we can do. The chefs are out now. Chef Kleinbear, Chef Corkle, Cork. Good girl. So let me uh, throw this here in the smoker, get it started up. Uh, you can pick this up at Lowe's usually, that's where I get it. Grill the good dogs. Show them the logo, Klein. All right, smoker starting to smoke. Yeah, whenever you run to dry, you gotta remember to hit that prime button. Let it prime a little bit, because it will take a long time. Now again, normally I didn't like mesquite. It's starting to grow on me. I'm not a native Texan, but I think all red-blooded Texans do like mesquite. Does smell good. Doing this for two reasons. Unfortunately, because the pork uh, shoulder is going to be wrapped in foil, I don't think it's going to infuse a lot of taste. But we still need it. You know, we're going to smoke it, so we still got to use it. But I'm hoping that as it's as it billows more smoke, it's going to keep all mosquitoes away while I work on the front door. Uh, s small hope that that might happen a little bit. Is a good dogs. So we're going to start getting this thing up the temperature. Probably going to set it around 225 for most of the time. If this thing starts going into the late night kick it up to 250 but yeah get ready on that let's go to let's go work on that uh pork shoulder real quick i'm gonna show you what we're gonna do grilling with the good dog okay so there's the uh bacon you just scooped it out and i slathered both sides of it and it actually stays on pretty well but when you flip it and put it on the surface it'll it'll go onto that surface so what i did was i put i let, put a layer down right here next thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna season up this side I'm just gonna put a ton of that uh, Stubbs rub down right here. I'm gonna bring this thing over, maybe douse it once or twice, put a little bit more on before we wrap it up. I'll show you what that looks like. Your hands get super greasy doing this. Uh, the Red Dragon's not here to hold the camera, so we're gonna have to do this in a few steps, but that's what it looks like so far. Now next, we're putting the pork, the uh, Stubbs pork rub on there. We're going with the good dogs. See, so I put the rub down on there. I got the rub on this. I'm gonna migrate this thing over. As you can see, it leaves a lot of bacon fat on the back, so you may just wanna do it how I did it here. Okay, we're gonna put that there, and I'm gonna scrape up some of this stuff right here. I know some of y'all think, oh man, that's nasty. It's cooking, guys. It is cooking. And I'm just gonna kinda of layer it on like that, okay? All over there. So next, I'm gonna put a piece of foil on top of this. I'm gonna put the probe in there. I'm gonna wrap this up. And it's gonna be fully encased. All right, 
It's looking pretty good. I, I have high hopes for this. I think it's going to work out really well. Big mess, though. Big mess. Lots of fun. Grill All right, so there she is. I'm going to go put that on the grill. The grill's ready. Yeah, the smoker's ready. We're going to put it on there. Uh, full disclosure, I actually did not put any of this in there. I figured it's already going to be a pretty leaky, greasy mess. Let's see how it does with this before we make it into just basically an aluminum water balloon. So, uh, still have a good bit of this left over. I'll probably use it to fry up some turkey gizzards. I, I love gizzards, and I have a bunch cut up from the turkeys that I got. So, yeah, probably easier for that. It'll keep it around. Um, it's useful stuff. We'll see how this works, because I want to try a technique like this when we do some more geese and some of the turkeys. Grill with the good dogs, let's throw it on the smoker. All right, 225. Bad boy in there, and pretty much just gonna leave it, as far as I'm concerned. Come back and check on it, just put the probe in there, make sure that checks out. 48 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, guys, let's grill with the good dogs. See what happens. All right, taking a break from the door. Pretty much got it done. Let's see where we're at. So we're at 190 right now. That's doing pretty good. Again, you want this to get up to about uh, 205 because it's not about the, the the edible temperature. It's not what's saving. You see there's a little bit of dripping going on there, so some of that fat's leaking out. So when you pick this up, we're gonna have to be careful. Um, it's not about Chef Baby Gee. It is not about the safety of cooking the pork. It's about the interstitial layers and the connective tissue and the muscles breaking down enough so that you can do that pulled pork action. That you can that you can um, pull it apart and it's nice and juicy and it's easy to eat. So that's what we're getting to. About 205 ought to do it. Go with the good dogs. Jeff Glenn. All right, I got the ice chest ready. Uh, I want to do this kind of like how I do the briskets. And uh, just put it in there, probably gonna let it sit for an hour or 30 minutes, something like that. Just about done work on the door. This is up the temp. I actually just turned off the pellet smoker while I got the ice chest. Okay. See, it's kind of dripping there a little bit. I'm gonna put it on its back like that. Klein bear. Let's bring this bad boy in, huh, dogs? Plop her in there. Wrap her around. I'll pull that probe out later. Bob's your uncle. All right, it's been an hour. Let's uh, let's unwrap this bad boy. I took the probe out. Start seeing a little bit of bone in there. So, yeah, let's unwrap it. See what it looks like. Where's my logo? Grilling. Chefs are very excited. I am too, because this looked this looks like it turned out great. Okay, I haven't started tearing into it yet, but you can see that it's pulled away from the bone. It's definitely pulled away. You can see that um I don't, I don't know what this part of the shoulder bone is called. Uh but yeah. Scopula? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna start shredding on this thing. Hopefully we can take the bone out. The bone will not be given to good dogs. You shouldn't be doing that. Don't be giving no bones to your dogs. Um, but yeah, let's start ripping into this bad boy. See if we can get some pulled pork out of it. All right, guys. I mean, it's delicious. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, fantastic. There's all the bones. You can see there was a ton of meat on that leg. And it, it just falls right off the bone. Chef Baby Gee. Chef Kleinbeck. Good dogs. Some for, you know, the fat dad. Man, that is good, guys. That is good. I gotta um, keep shredding at it some more. But, man, it's gonna make some good sandwiches. I'm gonna make me one here in a minute before I go to Lowe's. Good stuff. Growing with the good dogs. Another success story. You can't make this stuff up. So, yeah. So glad it. I'm going to be trying this out again with the, with some turkey and some geese, so we'll keep at it. We'll keep grilling. There's the start of the show. All right, guys, for those of you who don't know, we actually started putting our episodes up on YouTube. So if you haven't seen them, you know, go look up Grilling with the Good Dogs. 
They're lo- labeled as Y episode one, two. I think I have three episodes up right now. Just putting a backlog of all the episodes up on uh, YouTube. So good stuff, good grilling, and good dogs.